For a case of lower abdominal pain, using our mnemonic old cards, we note the onset, or when did it start? Did it come on suddenly, or was it more gradual? To help localize the pain, we'll ask our patient to point with one finger. For the duration, we want to know is the pain constant or intermittent? If it is coming and going, we like to note the frequency. How long does an episode of pain last for, and how many episodes are you having, per day or per week? Next, we can note the progression. Does the pain appear to be occurring more frequently or more severely? Or, if there has been no progression, we should include in our patient note, no progression, to show that we asked. To help characterize the pain, we like to note some descriptors. For example, is it sharp or dull, among others? Aggravating and alleviating factors, or radiation. And again, if there are none, we'll write, that, we'll write down in our patient note, none, to show that we asked. Treatments tried and severity on a scale of 1 to 10. We'll divide our lower abdominal case into abdominal, renal, and reproductive etiologies. For all cases, we should order a rectal exam, CBC, serum electrolytes, an x-ray of the abdomen, and if our patient is a female, a urine HCG. In appendicitis, our supporting points will include lower abdominal pain, particularly the right lower quadrant. The onset tends to be more gradual. It can be aggravated by movement in a sign of peritonitis. There can be nausea and vomiting, and by now we know to use our mnemonic A, B, and C to note any amount, blood, and color for the vomitus. We can have a fever, and as we'll see in our physical exam coming up, the positive special tests of a Soasign, McBurney's, and Rothsing will add to our workup an ultrasound of the abdomen. In diverticulitis, we can see lower abdominal pain that's now in the left lower quadrant, constipation, hematochesia, and we're going to use our mnemonic again, A, B, and C, to note the amount, blood, and color. And for bowel movements, we could do the amount by noting how many bowel movements they've been having per day, nausea and vomiting, and again, we're going to use our mnemonic A, B, and C, and a poor or low fiber diet. We'll include a CT abdomen because a colonoscopy would be contraindicated due to the risk of a perforation, and a PT and PTT as we do for any case that involves blood. In inflammatory bowel disease, which includes Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, we'll see abdominal pain with diarrhea, hematochesia, and we'll use our mnemonic A, B, and C, and we could ask bowel movements per day for the amount, tenasmus, or the urge to go, and now systemic symptoms of weight loss or a fever. We'll include an ESR CRP, a CT of the abdomen, colonoscopy, and a PT and PTT for any blood in the stools. In irritable bowel syndrome, we'll use the Rome criteria, which includes abdominal pain, alternating constipation and diarrhea, and aggravated or alleviated by defecation. We can also see tenasmus, or the urge to go. Our workup here focuses on ruling out other conditions, so we'll order a hydrogen breath test to rule out lactose intolerance, antibodies to antitransglutaminase to rule out gluten enteropathy, and a colonoscopy to rule out IBD. In intestinal ischemia, which includes mesenteric and colonic ischemia, we'll see crampy abdominal pain that's out of proportion to the physical exam. We can also have diarrhea and hematochesia, and again, we'll use the A, B, and C, noting the bowel movements per day for the amount, and our patient will classically be greater than 50 years old with a history of atrial fibrillation. We'll order a CT angiography and a PT and PTT. In an intestinal obstruction, We'll see crampy abdominal pain with a history of missed bowel movements or prior abdominal surgeries. We'll include a CT of the abdomen. In cancer, either a small bowel or a colorectal, we can see crampy abdominal pain, constipation with hematochesia, and we'll use our mnemonic A, B, and C, noting for the amount the bowel movements per day. And classically for cancer, we'll see the symptoms of weight loss or a decrease in appetite. Our patient will also be greater than 50 years old, and we'll add a CT abdomen colonoscopy, and a PT and PTT for any blood in the stools. In pyelonephritis, which is an upper UTI, we'll see lower abdominal or flank pain. Our patient can have dysuria, polyuria, and hematuria. And we'll be sure to include the A, B, and Cs to note the amount, blood, and color of the urine, and nausea and vomiting, and now we can see a fever. And as we'll see in our physical exam coming up, a positive special test for CVA tenderness and we'll order for all renal cases a urinalysis and a urine culture, an ultrasound of the renal system, and a PT and PTT for any blood in the urine. In nephrolithiasis, ureterolithiasis, or urolithiasis, 
we'll see lower abdominal or flank pain with a characteristic writhing, as we'll see in our physical exam coming up. There can be dysuria, polyuria, straining, a weak stream, and dribbling, and hematuria. It can be now radiating to the groin, and as we'll see in our physical exam, positive CVA tenderness. In cystitis, or a lower urinary tract infection, we can see lower abdominal pain with dysuria, polyuria, and hematuria. And now we'll have suprapubic tenderness. In an ovarian cyst or ovarian torsion or ovarian abscess, we'll see lower abdominal or pelvic pain. The onset can be sudden if it ruptures. It can be aggravated by movement in a sign of peritonitis. And if we have any nausea or vomiting, we'll be sure to use our mnemonic A, B, and C to note the vomitus and fever in a sign of adnexal necrosis. For all reproductive cases, we'll order a pelvic exam, a NAT for gonorrhea and chlamydia, an HIV antibody and RPR for syphilis, a wet mount and KOH prep, a pH of the vaginal fluid, cervical culture, an ultrasound of the pelvis, and a PT and PTT for any blood noted in the vagina. In an ectopic or aborted pregnancy, we'll see lower abdominal or pelvic pain. There will typically be a history of a, lat of a mis menses. It could be aggravated by movement in a sign of peritonitis and vaginal bleeding or nausea and vomiting, and we'll be sure to include our mnemonic A, B, and C for our patient note. In vaginitis, cervicitis, or pelvic inflammatory disease, we can see lower abdominal pain or pelvic pain. It can be aggravated by sex or dyspareunia. There could be a vaginal discharge, which we'll be sure to include the amount if there's any blood and the color. Along with a discharge, we could have vaginal pruritus. There can be nausea and vomiting and fever and a sign of adnexal necrosis. There, typically also our patient will have a history of sex, multiple sexual partners, no condom use, or recent STDs. In this case, I'm going to be dealing with or showing you how to deal with a patient with severe pain. The pain could be abdominal, it could be head, it could be anywhere, but in this case it's going to be abdominal pain, okay? So I'm in, I'm in the emergency room and I'm talking to a patient with severe abdominal pain. How long have you had this? I can't even stop moving it just keeps coming over everywhere i can't even i'm so sorry answer your questions i'm so, so sorry painful. you know what i'm gonna do you a real solid okay i'm gonna quickly take this physical this history take a very quick physical examination and get you relief you, you need. can't just give me medicine or something right now i can't give you medicine until i know what's happening or at least have an idea but i'm just gonna be as quick as oh, i can okay, okay? Thank you, thank you. and get you the relief you thank need you okay much. all right so that is how you deal with a patient in the ER who has severe abdominal pain. Okay, we'll start our abdominal exam with a hand sanitizer and we want to ask our SP if we have permission to examine you. Okay, we'll start with the hint exam. We'll look into his eyes if we're going to be concerned about, about jaundice in an abdominal case. So we'll make a comment that there's no scleral icterus and look down please. Okay, we'll move on to the oral pharynx. So we'll use a tongue depressor here. The key thing to do is you don't want to add too much pressure. For the SP, so just very lightly, you can press down, ask them to please stick out your tongue. Okay, and we'll comment that we don't see any uh, lesions while he's still sitting up to the cardio exam to get that out of the way. So the best way to do this here is again to lower the gown slightly and to ask them to please um, sit and hold it like this. This will protect them and keep them covered up. We want to verbalize that we don't see any visible lesions in the anterior chest, no visible lesions in the posterior chest. And we'll go ahead and palpate and see if he has any chest tenderness. So please let me know. Do the same thing on the back. Next thing we can do is auscultate for his heart sound, and so we'll use the mnemonic apartment M225A, and we'll listen first in his right intercostal for the aortic, and we'll go over to the left for the pulmonic, and then we'll go to the tricuspid. And now for the mitral, if this was a female, a good tip is to ask him to please lift up your left breast comment that we hear an audible S1, S2, regular rate and rhythm, no audible S3s, S4s, or murmurs, rubs, and gallops. Once we completed the cardio, we could transition nicely to the home exam while he's still sitting up, and so we could go ahead and percuss. We'll start above his clavicle, comparing left to right. And I want to go ahead and do the same thing in the back, two spots. Auscultate again, and we'll start above the clavicle. We're going to use the bell first. Please take it, and the instructions you want to give is so please take a deep breath when you feel my stethoscope. 
please take a deep breath in and out. Okay, go pair left to right. Do the same thing on the back now. Now we could verbalize again that there was it was clear to auscultation, no audible reason. Once we concluded the cardio and poem exam, we could cover him up again. Now we can instruct him, I'm going to now lie you down to do the abdominal exam. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, so we want to help them down. And you don't want to forget to extend the legs for the uh, leg rest. Now you could rest your legs. For the abdominal exam, they'll have a gown here, and you want to move it up all the way to their pelvic, pelvis, and then you want to ask permission to take it up. We want to do the same step again. We want to first verbalize that we see no visible lesions. First, ask if he has any pain anywhere. Yeah, just right here. A little pain on the upper right side. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start on the opposite side on the lower left. So, okay. Go to the right. Okay, we could verbalize that there were normal active bowel sounds. He had pain on the upper right. We'll start on the lower left. Okay, and we can comment again that there were uh, normal resonance to percussion. Now we're going to go ahead and palpate. So the tip for this is for superficial first. We're just going to use one hand and we're going to start in the lower left. And we want to make good eye contact to see if he winces at all and, or let him know if you have any pain to please let me know. If we're concerned for cystitis, we would want to assess suprapubic tenderness. And so we will expose the area and we'll ass assess the suprapubic area over here by palpating. And if he has pain, he'll let us know. Do you have any pain? Okay, so now we would be concerned for cystitis. We'll do it in the three quadrants on the bottom, three middle quadrants, and then three upper quadrants. Okay, and then we could have good confirmation that he was in pain enough for deep. We just want to place our second hand on top and do it, do it again. Okay, so we could. Ouch. He had a little pain in there on deep. We want to go ahead and check uh, for hepatomegaly. So the best way to do this is to place your hand under the border of his liver. You want to instruct the patient to please breathe in. And then as he breathes out, you can rebreathe out now. You want to go all the way up into the lower rib cage. And as long as you don't feel the liver coming, extending in below, you can verbalize that there was no hepatomegaly. And you can do the same thing for the spleen. So again, please breathe in. And now please breathe out. Okay, and you could feel the lower left rib and there was no spleen coming down. If we were concerned about a lower abdominal case, we'd want to check a psoas side for appendicitis. So we can start on the right side. You want to ask them to lift your leg up against resistance. And do you have any pain? Okay, so yes. they would have pain. So that would be right side appendicitis. And you may want to do the same thing on the left if you were concerned about atypical or left side appendicitis. Do you have any pain? Mm -hmm. Okay. And other special tests we will assess for lower abdominal pain case if we're concerned of appendicitis is McBurney sign. And that is two-thirds from the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. And if he has pain, he'll let us know. So we'll palpate that distance so we could feel for the anterior superior iliac spine. We feel the bone, and we'll go about two-thirds of the way, and we'll see. Oh. You have pain. Okay, so this will be a concerning sign for now appendicitis. And we could also assess Rothstein's sign, which is when we assess the left side, and he'll have pain on his right side. So we'll go in on his left, yes, right. and he has pain on his right, so we're also now concerned for appendicitis. Okay, and very important for a case of lower abdominal pain, if we're concerned of nephrolithiasis or pyelonephritis, to check for kidney pathology, we're going to assess CVA tenderness. So to do this, we very simply make a fist, and we could ask them if they have any pain when they tap. We'll do left. Do you have any pain here? No. Okay, and then we'll assess the right as well. Do you have any pain there? Yes, I feel So now he has positive we're concerned for renal pathology on his right side. And now that concludes the abdominal exam, so you could help cover them again and then sit them up because it helps you. Okay. And then you just want to ask them if they have any questions for you. Yeah.